Stormbringer, Legend of the 23rd Century by A. W. Black Prologue, An Average Family Under the relentless midday desert sun, a humanoid grub held a seven-foot-tall armadillo by his throat. The brown and white segmented hero smiled victoriously as he started to coat his armor-plated nemesis with strands of sticky silk. Time's up, Armadillon, announced the maggot-like hero as the silk formed a white cocoon around his enemy. Your pathetic threads can't hold me, grub guy, yelled Armadillon, bursting from his stringy prison before it could harden. Suddenly, a female voice interrupted the action. Simon, come down for dinner! Armadillon raised his fist, ready to strike down Grub Guy. Before he could land his punch, the two combatants froze when a pause symbol appeared in the sky above them. Simon Anderson loved watching superheroes. His collection of comics and movies was impressive, though not very well stored. In fact, his bedroom floor was dominated by the vast majority of it. The scent of pizza filled the air as he opened his bedroom door. Coming, Mum! he shouted as he ran down the stairs two at a time, before charging through the living room to get to the kitchen. Where's mine? he asked, noticing two empty pizza boxes in the middle of the table. He didn't care that the kitchen window had been boarded up after the break in the night before, as none of his Christmas presents had been taken from under the tree. Have you been watching those baby movies again? asked June, his older sister. Grub guys, not for babies, insisted Simon. Stop arguing, snapped their mother. Simon, I called you down three times. Your pizza's in the microwave, she added as she left the room. June waited for the door to close. A grub is a baby insect, so grub guy must be a baby, she whispered, trying not to alert their mother. Simon's frustration got the better of him. Stop making fun of grub guy, or I'll... Or you'll what? He contemplated his threat for a moment. I'll tell Dad you've been sneaking out at night again, he mumbled through a mouthful of cold pizza. Fine, Grub Guy's really cool, she admitted sarcastically. And, he prompted while reaching for a glass on the draining board. And he's a realistic hero who could really happen in real life. That's better. You can go now, said Simon as he waved his sister out of the kitchen. June's ego was bruised, but not for the first time. She recalled the day she had first met Simon, almost four years ago. She had been living in a care home for children for only a few months before Simon moved in. He had been taken into care after his abusive parents left him at home while they went on a month-long holiday. He would often get June into trouble, blaming her for things that she hadn't done, and only rarely getting caught himself. His favourite trick was to swap the contents of the sugar pot and the salt shaker before leaving a trail of evidence leading to June's bedroom. The worst revenge she could think of involved pouring concentrated orange juice into the steam iron before planting the bottle in Simon's room. But he watched silently as she executed her scheme and hid the bottle in her bedroom while she wasn't looking. Regardless of which of them was guilty, the staff at the care home were relieved after nearly two years when the Andersons, a childless couple in their thirties were looking to adopt a boy and a girl. June followed her mother into the living room where a local news program was being displayed by a high definition holographic panel. The brand name Holovision was labelled along the front edge of the device. The report was about unexplained dents in the roofs of vans and buses. Have they talked about the purple light again? asked June. They said it left three robbers in the police station last night, replied her mother. Dad says it's a trick. It does seem a bit far-fetched, she said, pausing to take a sip of tea. The police called while you were at school. Apparently there was a note left with those very same burglars, saying they were trying to break in here. June was about to talk when she was interrupted by an impatient knock at the front door. I'll get it, she said before skipping out of the room. June opened the front door. Did your mum leave the keys in the lock again? Grumbled her father as he pushed his way past. She ordered some pizzas tonight, but I think Simon ate it all, she said with a grin, trying to get her brother into trouble. Simon crept out of the living room. I was going to ask mum to get a Chinese, but then I remembered we've already got one, he laughed in an ignorant attempt to make fun of June's apparent ethnic background. 
Simon! she yelled before turning to slap her little pest of a brother. But he was so small and agile that he dodged June's flailing palm and dashed up the stairs, giggling all the way. Nobody in the house, not even June, knew where her biological parents were from. She had been told her mother had died in childbirth, and her father had abandoned her, never to be heard from again. I grabbed a sausage roll on the way home. Where's your mum? asked their father. In the living room, watching TV. Oh, hang my coat up, he instructed as he shed his rain-soaked jacket. She picked up the drenched coat and hung it over a coat hook. June was just tall enough to reach it on her own, which she considered to be her only advantage over her brother. She couldn't help but notice that Simon seemed to be their father's favourite. She sneaked up to the living room door, hoping to catch a word or two about the mysterious purple light which had been in the news. They were instead arguing over why the alarm had failed to go off during the previous night's break-in. "'Sneaking about again!' shouted Simon. June cringed before turning to face her brother. He'd crept back down the stairs with a tormenting grin. "'Oh, it's you! Don't you have a movie to watch?' she whispered. "'Yeah, Grub Guy and Armadillon were having the best fight ever!' he said with an even bigger smile before he ran up the stairs again. June followed him and went to her bedroom. Apart from her mountain of homework, she had a feeling that the night ahead would be very busy indeed.